A huge thank you goes out to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel. Looking for a new website? Head on over to squarespace.com. Oh yeah, they, you, that, that's you, Jeremy. <laughs> Do they work? Those are styling. Yeah, but look how high they go. All right. Followed my tripod. That'll work. And I got a belt. These are better than the ones I got. So Jeremy and I, uh, we kind of took the day off today, made the executive decision to go into town and try and find some hip waders. And as luck would have it, there was a Canadian tire there and uh, they had hip waders and they happened to be on sale. So we got these for $69, reduced from $90. Uh, they're okay, uh, they're not insulated so standing in the water does get a little cold but it's better than being wet and cold um, so the the weather has been uh, a little bit windy still uh, but in the next day or so it's supposed to calm right down so I'm really looking forward to that it's great to get into some areas that we couldn't get into before without getting wet feet so I'm able to get some uh, some really great compositions wandering around uh, in the woods here. It's actually quite deep in some spots. Some spots it's deeper than the hip waders. It's uh, quite surprising. So we're gonna hang around here tonight and uh, possibly tomorrow morning. And uh, then we're talking about maybe going over to the other side of the lake here. There's more fall color over there. Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing great. Well, as you can see, uh, this is quite a different environment for me to shoot in. <laughs> it's a little bit cold. Uh, I really wish I'd got those uh, uh, insulated uh, <laughs> hip waders. <laughs> anyway, um, as you can see, this is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, what I'm trying to do this morning is photograph the reflections with the uh, the aspen trunks but you'll notice that there's a, a little bit of a pathway going through the, the center of these groups of trees and uh, with this camera uh, I think what I'm going to do is take a, a pano uh, 16 by 9 just seems to lend itself to that just to include the bottom half of the trunks and uh, also the reflections. And I'm trying to avoid, there's some, there's some bright areas in the reflections where the sky is reflecting in the water. And I think they're gonna be a little bit distracting. So I've just composed it so you can just see the tree trunks, the reflections, and this turquoise water, and then that's it. And then the pathway leading through the, uh, the trees here. Now this morning it's quite cloudy, but there are breaks. so. There is a little bit of backlighting, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm hoping for a little bit more, but if it doesn't happen, then this is just fine. Um, it has been quite windy. Oh, hang on. Let's just take a shot here because... Um...
I've been waiting for the the wind to die down and um, the lulls are quite far between <clears throat> the lulls are quite far between as you see the leaves are kind of moving and the, and the shutter speed is pretty slow I'm at about half a second to one second which is pretty slow and um, that's an ISO 400 f16 to f22 because I want to make sure I get all that depth in there that's the only problem with medium format cameras is that depth can be a bit of an issue um, especially with longer focal lengths the lens I'm using right now is a uh, 45 to 100 and this is a relatively new lens from Fuji and I've got to be honest with you I love it it seems to be just the right focal length for what I do a lot of my uh, photography in uh, those kind of intimate views the uh, the 32 to 64 is a great focal length but I always find that I just need just a little bit more and this kind of uh, addresses that that issue right I'm just gonna wait for the wind and then try and find something else Jeremy is over here uh, he's up to his well, he's up to about the same height as me I guess so <laughs> then I'm gonna have to go and get warmed up with a, a nice cup of tea okay so hopefully you can see this um, as you can see I've just included the sh bit of a reflection at the bottom here and then we have these beautiful yellow leaves but you can see there's a pathway uh, going through the center of the trees here and the idea is to kind of lead you through and of course I've got the 16 by 9 um, format which I think works really well I might try something a little even thinner and longer see if that works and there we go no wind a very little wind perfect and we just have a quick look at the that looks great really good I should mention that throughout all of these videos uh, from the Canadian Rockies, Jeremy and I never really ventured very far from the campground. In most cases, we were never more than a few hundred meters from where we were camped, except for a couple of times when we decided to canoe across the lake and uh, explore the other side. This scene here, I absolutely loved, and I kept going back to the same scene over and over again and photographing it over and over again. One of the things that disturbed me just a little bit was that faint line of highlight in the background. And what that is, is where the wind is picking up across uh, the lake in the background. I never could get rid of it. Uh, it was never calm enough. So what I ended up doing in the final result here is, uh, is just cloning that section out.
I'd just like to take a moment to thank Squarespace once again for sponsoring this week's video. If you are thinking about putting together a website, then I would highly recommend checking out squarespace.com. Squarespace is a great platform for those of you that don't really want to spend tons of time designing or coding a website. I've had several websites over the years and Squarespace is definitely one of the easier platforms that I've used. If I want to set up a gallery, all I have to do is drag and drop my images straight into the gallery and then I can just organize them very quickly, caption them, and I can even edit them if I want to. So I'd highly recommend using Squarespace as a platform for your next website. If you'd like to go and check them out, be sure to go to squarespace.com. And if you like what you find, be sure to use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. After I'd photographed those beautiful aspen surrounded by that turquoise water, I decided to head on out to where Jeremy was and photograph the aspen that were out a little bit further in the lake. And as luck would have it, the light was perfect. So I rushed around as quickly as I could to try and isolate those trees in the background uh, with that side light. And it was very lucky because the background wasn't in light. So it had a really great contrast between the background and uh, the sunlit trees. Something else that I wanted to mention uh, while I was on this trip was that I started to shoot a lot of my images in uh, JPEG and RAW. And the reason why I started to shoot JPEG is, is because in a lot of cases, if you have good light, good composition, and a good subject matter, then you really shouldn't have to do much in post-processing. And I wanted to see how far I could go with that. So this image here is actually just a JPEG straight out of the camera. Uh, and actually, I uh, started to process a RAW file and when I'd finished, I compared it to the JPEG and I actually preferred the, the JPEG. So I haven't done anything special to this photograph other than use good technique and photograph the subject in good light and think about my composition. And perhaps that's a really good tip to, to give uh, photographers that are just getting into photography is, you know, if you use good technique and look for good light and think about your composition and your subject matter, then you really shouldn't have to do much in post-processing. And if you're like a lot of photographers who really don't like sitting behind a computer, then I would highly recommend that you shoot JPEGs and do as much as you can in camera. Shoot RAW as well, just as a backup file, but in a lot of cases, you can just get away with the JPEG. Well, I really thought that this was going to be my last video in the series of photographing full color in the Canadian Rockies. It would seem that I have enough footage for a couple more videos, so stay tuned for those. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. And as always, if you enjoy the content of my channel, be sure to uh, subscribe. All right, everybody. Thank you ever so much for watching again this week. And until next week, bye-bye. Thank you.